Hello, my name is Jay and welcome back to my Tech Vault. And today I'm going to be talking about something that I've kind of already touched on, but I wanted to make a new video because new information has come to light. And especially because a lot of people watch these videos talking about, should you wait? Should you wait to buy something? Should you wait to see what we have next year or just buy now? And I've always done individual specific scenarios for each kind of people or each kind of person, sorry. And each kind of person, and I go through and I talk about what each person, depending on your situation, should buy or wait uh, for gamers, for streamers, things like that. And recently, we've gotten a little bit more leaks from Intel in this situation that show that not only is it going to be a little bit more interesting next year, but we also will see a lot more competition next year. So I want to take today to kind of go over what I've already talked about in a previous video where I talked about, you know, should you wait to buy the AMD stuff? Uh, should you wait to buy the AMD processors? Because we've seen some interesting leaks. And I think that what we're really going to see in this, um, this next upcoming year is a lot of competition, which I mean, if you're anybody out there that's looking for any kind of processor, it's going to be competition. It is going to basically drive up your processor speeds, your core counts, your cache, basically everything that really matters in for anybody, gaming, workstation, etc. So it's really, I want to take today's video to talk about what we've kind of the stuff that we've gotten from Intel, some of the stuff that we've gotten from AMD, and then just give an overall um, broad representation of, you know, should you wait uh, for each circumstance. So I want to start, first talk about gamers. Now budget gaming and the people that are getting processors priced around uh, $200, this is really kind of the perfect range um, at the moment, we've got some nice processor like a Ryzen 5 uh, from AMD 2600. That's a really good gaming processor because it's got a good amount of cores. You can do some streaming, recording on the side, and it's perfectly capable of handling it. Now, on the other hand, we've got some interesting stuff if you still want to do gaming. Right now, if you want to do high-end gaming, get the best out there for processors, you'd be looking at a 9900K from Intel and i9. And that is just extremely expensive at the moment. I think it's priced at like $550 at the moment of this video. So what I'm expecting over the course of the next year is especially since Intel has announced that 10 nanometers is something that they're going to be working on. And especially since it's kind of around the same time that we've heard these rumors, I'd be willing to expect that we'd have some 12 nan or 10 nanometer processors coming out next year. Meanwhile, I think AMD also is going to be releasing uh, their um, sorry, the 3000 series, and the 3000 series also is going to be running at 7 nanometers, which basically puts it at that Intel is at a disadvantage to AMD, which may not seem like a lot to you, but basically the size of the transistors really determine the core, um, the clock speeds, mostly the clock speeds. You can fit more stuff on the processor die themselves, but basically the clock speeds of what gamers and you know streamers that are doing gaming want and matter to them. So. What does that mean? Well, that means that not only will Intel be still at a disadvantage, I made a video where I talked about they'll be completely blown out of the water, but at least Intel will be at a disadvantage, and usually Intel holds about maybe like, uh, maybe, I don't know, a couple, point like five gigahertz above AMD in any processor. And I think that that little gap in the processor speeds, or not the, the gap in the tr manufacturing size, really will allow AMD and Intel to kind of be even. So it really come down to cores. Now, obviously, if you're looking at it from the standpoint of you know, you need a lot of cores, you're a workstation user, and do you want to wait till next year to buy your processor? I mean, it really all comes down to how bad do you need it. I mean, if you're willing to wait, and hopefully some of these rumors promise something like 16 cores, 32 threads on AM4, then, you know, that may be something to wait for. If it's something like, you know, you're a workstation user, but you, you know, stream sometimes, and you want to just have a good amount of cores and do some gaming, Ryzen 2700X is okay at the moment, but for some of the clock speeds and stuff that we've seen next year, it's going to get a much or substantially cheaper, and it will be substantially cheaper to purchase something like that um, next year. So if you have enough, you know, especially new, uh, new 3000, I think Horizon 5, 3600, it's supposedly 8 cores, 16 threads, um, with like a 4.0 base and like 4.5 gigahertz boost clock speed, substantially higher than, you know, and of course it's going to be cheaper as well than a 2700X. So it really just depends on your situation. Then if you're going for the budget gamer, especially the budget gamers, I want to make a point in this video, is Intel has always catered to the high-end market, the people that are going to be getting the very best or close to the best for their situation, for gaming, um, and pretty much just for gaming. Intel's always held the spot for gaming, and AMD's recently take, um, taken over the low end for gaming. And in, if you're any type of person, 
the Ryzen uh, 3s will be coming out that will be coming out next year, hopefully, and that are rumored. These these rumors are suggesting that it'll be six cores, twelve threads. Which I just want to make a point to say that any gamer will not use above probably around six cores if you were just doing solely gaming, and you were had a decent clock speed. And some of these actually have a substantially good sized clock speed. And keep in mind this is at like a hundred dollars. So. Even with Intel, whatever Intel does, the low-end gamer will not be affected. If, if looking at past results, if we just looked at like what Intel has done in the past, they, uh, they haven't really catered to the budget end processors. Uh, I mean, yes, you have i3s and stuff, but the amount of cores and stuff that's packed in there will be a substantial better deal if these rumors are true. If they're not, then of course this whole video is kind of invalid and you should probably stop watching. And then so, the, as I said, the high-end gamer... Um, especially someone that's looking at doing a lot of multi-threaded tasks and streaming and video editing and recording and streaming and video editing. All those kind of high-end YouTuber, streamers, Twitch users, things like that. The high-end stuff like the 9900K and the uh, 2700X are kind of the top at the moment. And definitely the 9900K is the best uh, performance, but it's not the best deal. And I think over the next year, we'll see something where AMD will have something like 16 cores and 32 threads with some a uh, 5.1 gigahertz boost clock speed according to what these rumors suggest and if that is really the case and you've kind of got something that's a much better situation than um you would with a 9900k now i also want to take today's video to talk about you know how bad do you need it because these processors and this the stuff that's going to be coming out next year um, a lot of them are at ces which will be at the beginning of this next upcoming year I'm really going to be excited for. I'm going to be doing a lot of news videos covering it. I'm going to be really happy on that one. Um, but there's also going to be stuff that's going to be coming out like in the quarter, uh, later quarters, some of the best stuff, like some of the highest end 16 cores, 32 thread processors will be coming out at the end or in the middle of 2019. And if you can wait all that time, that's fine. But if you really don't want to have to wait, it really just depends on how bad you need it because keep in mind that's it's going to take probably six months at the time of this video for this stuff to come out. And, you know, for people that it really need it now, like you're building your gaming computer and you need something like your old computer broke, you really don't have a choice. You have to buy something now and, you know, choose from your available options what you can buy. If you really are thinking about upgrading, for me, I'm going to be waiting to the Ryzen 3800X. I mean, actually, I think 3850X. If, if the, those leaks are true, I'm going to be waiting. I'm going to be upgrading the system so I can do more video editing work. But basically, it just depends on what your position is. I would, I'm would. i not going to argue that you know if you're in desperate need of a processor, don't like go without a computer. You, you need a computer. You could always get something low-end if you can man, like manage, like 2600, uh, Ryzen 5 2600. Grab that for now and then always upgrade later on. But I will say that the prices, if these rumors are true, the prices of those old-gen processors will probably drop substantially. So you probably end up uh, coming out and losing a couple bucks, probably 100 or so bucks, if you try to resell it at that time. So... Thank you very much for watching. I apologize again for making a, a duplicate video. Um, I made a video. More leaks came out literally the day I was posted it. And I was like, oh man, so I got to make another video. Make two separate videos talking about kind of the same thing. I apologize again, but I really wanted to take to talk about um, how Intel will... Of course, I'm, I'm not denying that Intel will have something competitive. Um, I'm just saying that it will be interesting to see that... What, regardless of the circumstances, regardless of what goes on, regardless of what is released... Competition is what really matters to everybody, and I think we'll have a lot of that from both companies, and it will be very evenly matched. So I'm interested to see what actually happens. But thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed today's video, and goodbye.